Okay, my outstandingly magnificent intelligent friends, we are going to talk about atomic theory today. And if people say, oh, Roger, you're doing all this light research. Well, well what about dark energy? What, what's dark energy? What's, how, how, what's that all about? They say it's over half of everything is dark energy. Well, yes, it is, exactly. And I could show it right now. That's it right there. I will show it in a second. I'm going to go deep into it, but I'm just prepping you for this because the best way for me to do this is to show you how wrong Einstein and literally every physicist is because the entire universe, as far as I can determine, is consists of electrons. And we was, uh, this is what an electron is. It has a positive and a negative. It's not just negative. They always thought it's just a negative. No, absolutely not. There has a positive, which is the weak force, and it has uh, uh, the negative portion, which is the strong force that explodes. I will show you uno momento. This is a red laser pulse. Du, 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 du. And then we accelerated it, as you will see. It concussed at a venturi, forcing the weak particles to separate on a concussion. The weak particle go away just like that, like a little black ball, and the, the, the white particle explode like a bomb. That's what happens coming out of here, and then you get the electron neutrino showers and so forth. Now, which are the Higgs fields. Now, in between every single one of these atoms, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of electrons, because everything consists of electrons, 100%, 100%. And then at certain frequencies, they lock in. That's what these are. But in between each of these, there's a ton of isotopes. He said, oh yeah, it's got six, six or seven stable isotopes and a whole bunch of unstable ones. Of course, because it, you, it, it exists in a cloud of electrons, a flood of electrons. And that flood is heat. That's all it is. Heat moves through there as electrons. They push in. If it's cold, they will push their way in. If it's hot, they will push their way out. And they're just electrons continuously flowing. You walk through the air, they collect on you. You go to, to go to ground. They could collect on polar molecules, which is water primarily. Humidity, and that's why you get static when the humidity is wrong. I mean, everything is just so simple once you understand electron flood theory. Now, you can see the black particles have walked away from the white ones. They came through just like this. They came in like this and exploded. I'm going to show you all this in extremely good detail. But I want you to understand Einstein was wrong. These are, these are repulsion patterns. They are not interference patterns. This is a single slit. I've got the, this thing down so pat now. Rod Warren discovered years ago that you could put light through a Venturi. And a certain phone, all it is is a cell phone can capture these pictures. And I have one, I have all the same stuff he has, but I mean, how can you do any better than this? So I don't bother, and Rod, is, he's come back on board here, and he's been sending me stuff the last few days. Knock your socks off. Absolutely unbelievable. What we're going to be doing now is interfering with other patterns, different colors, and so forth. Oh, we've got all kinds of things we're going to do. But anyway, let, let's just get on to this, because that is the dark matter. And it's every electron is attached to one of those. There it is right here. I don't know if I just showed you this because I forget really quick nowadays. <laughs> that's, the, that's the nucleus. Now, in a helium and in a hydrogen, you just almost all of the positives are very close in the center and surrounded by the negativeness because each one of these has to be attached to a black. All right? And, and they could force... This is just a very, very crude representation. But at, at these certain vibrational energies, and you can look it up, do salt vibration, um, salt table vibration experiments or something like that. And then you can, they also do it with water. And it's absolutely phenomenal, the shapes. Uh, and they could become stable at these it's a certain number of particles. That's all it is. This is, say, 10,000, that's 50,000, that's 100,000, that's 300,000. That's all it is. Strong force and a weak force. They never considered the weak force. The weak force is the dark energy. So let's go from here. 
Okay, Einstein says light is not a particle and light cannot accelerate, it has a constant speed. This is light from a red laser. This is that same light accelerating and that is the particle nature of that light which is stuck in the center of it and it controls a huge region around it. So we see a wave, not a particle, until we accelerate it. Then we see the particle, then we see it concuss in a venturi which forces these regions to come crushing in and then we see them explode in what's called Higgs fields and electron neutrinos they also call them and we also see the actual box of particles and those are just like this all right there's back to back this way and this way, just like bar magnets. That's what an electron is, is a bar magnet. It has a positive and a negative. Only the negative is explosive, the white part. The black part is not explosive whatsoever. It just falls away, as I will show you. All right, we have the photons in both the green and the red. I'm going to go to the red. All right, so here we're going to see the red photons. And as they come in, they, you don't really get any definition. And as they get close to the Venturi, they start to show the box configuration. The spikes come up to, from the top and the bottom, and then they just get blurry. Because actually the black separates from the white. That's the strong force and the weak force. Now, the black, though, is a strong, attractive force to the white. It's just equal to it. Like each one of them has one electron volt, let's say. And so they snap together tight. They're not, they're not loose. They're tight. But when they hit that Venturi, they separate. Okay, so you, I know you've seen this. This is just unaccelerated laser, red laser pulsed. This is as it approaches the Venturi. It's extremely obvious what you're seeing here the particle is escaping from its concussion wave and turning into only the white spot and we're going to see the black all over the place and they want to get away from each other that's what the interference patterns are they're not this is a single slit it's not one going this way and one going that way they just want to repel from each other the white ones the black ones don't care they're right on top of each other i'll show you all right, here they are in a little more detail. There's the black balls. You see those? Those were the black balls that were attached back here. They came in like this. They just, that's what they do. Now, that's the weak force. So they say, oh, they're passing through us right now. Well, they're part of the electrons. Everything is constructed of electrons. It's electron flood theory. And, you know, I'm pretty damn sure it's positively certain. All the nucleuses are made of, of just masses of electrons, and then they are in floods of electrons. That's how heat flows. It's just more electrons coming in, and they push other electrons out. And if it's, if it's cold in there, other ones push their way in. Simple as that. And between every one of these atoms, there's thousands and thousands of electrons. That allows for all of the elegance of of the um, isotopes because every one of these has a ton of stable and unstable isotopes where they come from if there's only protons and neutrons and electrons it, it, the electron we always thought was a hundred percent negative totally wrong the other part of it is the dark energy okay this is what CERN is looking for muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos they come together one of them just has no energy whatsoever and just falls off and one of them explodes as it hits you see here the explosion this one just comes off and does nothing they're attached together that makes an electron okay I just got this from my friend Pedro subatomic stories where Einstein failed quantum gravity Einstein was wrong about everything light is a particle it can accelerate all kinds of problems with that it has mass now Let's just listen to what they have to say. I, I just made all these, uh, these um, claims and I backed them up. Now, I'm going to show you what they're talking about, the weak and strong force that they cannot find. Well, that technique didn't work. We know that a quantum theory of gravity is necessary. Obviously, gravity must also exist in the microcosm. So, Which means down in the subatomic range. Well, obviously, we need a theory that describes it. 
Well, we don't know what a theory of quantum gravity entails. We do know a few things. For instance, we know some of the characteristics of the quantum carrier of gravity. All right, there's no sense to go any further. They are, I, well, let me just come out to where it fills in the chart what they think. All right. It, it, it's completely wrong. This is where we are in the electron range, the Z and the W boson. Now, one of them has the charge. We know that explodes, electron neutrino. One of them doesn't have it. And that's where we are. They call that the weak force. Now, up in here is where you have your photons and your chunks of matter smashing into things. They say there's no electrical charge. Well, there is, but it's built into like a whole batch of particles together. When they're together, they neutralize each other. That's all. This is a whole different story. This one has its complete own charge, and this one has no charge, the, the, the black and the white that I showed before. So that's really where we're at. And I think I have shown dark energy is literally this one right here, the Z boson. That's your dark matter, dark, you know, well, dark matter, because it doesn't have any energy that I can see. Okay, remember, we're down in a weak force. I showed you the Z bosons, the little black balls. They have no electric charge. I agree. And their white cousins that are stuck to them explode like a bomb. They do have an electric charge. They are electrons.